Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoben's Nest. Welcome to my Christmas series. This first project is using these two gorgeous pieces of fabric. This first one is sort of a Nordic print and the second one is a linen fabric. It's really nice and heavy, almost like drop cloth, but way better quality. Using a pencil, I'm going to sketch out a little mini stocking. It's not actually going to be that tiny, but it will be about the size of this piece of fabric, which I think is probably about eight inches by five inches, I want to say. Anyhow, I'm just going to go ahead and sketch out what I want. And then using my fabric scissors, I'll cut it out. If you ever work with fabric, it is a really good investment to have a pair of fabric scissors. They are so completely different than regular cutting scissors. They cut fabric so smoothly and the blades are just amazing. You won't go back to using regular scissors on fabric once you've tried a pair of fabric scissors. I'll link this pair or something similar down in my description box if you want to take a look. They're actually not even that expensive. You can usually get a pair like this for anywhere from $10 to $20. Using some beige colored cardstock, I'm going to be cutting out the same template stocking because I need to have a little bit of weight on the back of the fabric. If you do invest in a pair of fabric scissors, make sure that you don't ever cut anything other than fabric with them. If you cut paper or plastic, it's going to dull the blade and really make them unusable for fabric. You're going to see me switch back and forth between my blue pair, which is for paper and plastic, and my red pair, which is for fabric. I decided just to use a regular glue stick to glue the fabric right on top of the paper. I'm making sure to go right to the edge. I did have to use a little bit of hot glue in a few spots when I was putting the fabric on and doing the rest of the design on these. But other than that, it worked out really well. I used a glue stick because I didn't want to get any of the bumps like you would with hot glue and I didn't use Mod Podge because I didn't want my fabric to get all wet. Now I've grabbed the other piece of fabric and I'm just going to cut a shorter section out because I don't need the whole thing right now. I'm folding it in half so when I make my cuts on the one side, they'll be the same on the other side. I'm sure you remember doing this in school and maybe even for crafting when you want to make say a heart you want to have both sides exactly the same so this is the same concept except i'm doing a christmas tree so i'm going to go cut up once and then cut across and then cut up on an angle again and then cut across again so it's hard to explain but i think you might get the idea here i'm basically cutting out some triangles and each time i go and cut up on an angle towards the top I'm going in just a little bit further from the edge each time basically I'm just making my own Christmas tree if you can't do it freehand like this that's okay go ahead and cut out a Christmas tree on some paper trace it on your fabric and cut it out that way Placing my Christmas tree on the stocking, I'm noticing that the bottom part of the tree is a little too wide. So I'm just going to fold it in half one more time and just trim a little bit off that angle at the bottom. Using the glue stick one more time, I'm going to apply a generous amount to the linen fabric and then put my Christmas tree design right on top. Next, I am going to use my hot glue gun to apply some trim. This is some white cotton rope that I got at a hardware store. It was a big roll and it's not actually 100% pure white. It is more of a butcher twine color maybe or maybe even just a little bit of an off white. But it blends in really nicely with my stocking colors. My stocking is looking pretty cute right now, but it needs a little cuff at the top. I picked up this faux fur ribbon and it's wired at Michael's last year on clearance right after the holidays. So what I'm going to do is just kind of eye out how much I'm going to need and then cut out a piece of the fur to go on the top of my stocking. I'm going to use hot glue to glue on the fur to the stocking. I'm just going to put the wired portion down first and then I'm going to fold it over and glue it on the back the same way. And this is going to 
create a beautiful little cuff, but it's also going to create a loop where I'll be able to put my garland or my string through to be able to thread the stockings. I made five stockings all together. I did three of them like this with the linen fabric first and then the striped fabric as my design. And then I did two of them with the striped fabric as my stocking and the linen fabric as my design. I also did two Christmas trees, two snowmen and one star. Here's a look at my five stockings. I just love how they turned out. Now I'm going to embellish them a little bit more. They need to have some more Christmas spirit. So I'm using a little bit of this boxwood that's got a little bit of a frosted look to it. It almost looks like lamb's ear in the texture. I'm going to put three of those down and pretend like they're a holly leaves. I'm going to do one pine cone and then three red pip berries. Whenever I find the red pip berry garland at the Dollar Tree, I usually grab two or three because I love using them in my Christmas decor. That deep red berry is one of my favorite colors. Last year, I thrifted a huge bag of these red bead garlands. I think I've got six or seven of them and they're super long. So my idea was to pull this through the loop at the top of the stockings and use that as my garland string to hang the stockings. They turned out super cute. I hope you like them too. These fabrics were sent to me by Chang Kage and they create, produce and distribute all of their own fabrics. You can use it for DIY like I'm doing. I'm creating some seasonal home decor, but you can also use it for bedding, for clothing, for tablecloths, for curtains. They're high quality fabrics and they're at reasonable prices. There's a wide selection of fabrics as well, such as waterproof, embroidery and organic fabrics. I'll have a link for Chang Kage down in my description box. So make sure you go check out their website, browse through all of their wonderful materials that they have, and hopefully you'll find something that will be suitable for the next project you'd like to create. For this project, I'm gonna start out by just using my Easy Press to iron the fabrics and make them nice and crease free. You can also just do this with a regular iron. I am also using a product today called Heat Bond Light. I've had this roll for a really long time. It has a smooth side and it has a rough side. The rough side is where the adhesive is. So what I'm going to be doing is cutting a piece of the Heat Bond Light to fit the size of my piece of fabric. I'll be putting the rough side of the heat bond onto the back side of my fabric and that's when I'm going to be using my easy press again you can use a regular iron for this and I'm going to be ironing it on to make sure that the adhesive bonds to the fabric check a little piece of your fabric as you're going to make sure that the adhesive is bonding to the fabric the back side of the fabric will show up a little bit shiny so just make sure that you let it cool and don't burn your hands because it does get really hot with the fabric being ironed now that I have both pieces of fabric with the adhesive bond on them, I'm going to go ahead and work on my designs. I went to my Cricut Joy and just using some cardstock, I cut out some Christmas tree shapes. I'm going to use the stencil portion of it, as you see me doing here, just to outline the tree shapes. You can also use the cutout portion of the tree, which I will be doing in a few minutes. But if you don't have a Cricut, you know what? These are really easy shapes that you can just cut out with your scissors or a craft knife and create your own paper stencils. I've got three different types of trees that I'm going to use and I'm also then going to do them on both types of fabric so I've got at least two to three Christmas trees in each fabric style. 
here are all the different trees. I'm just using my rotary cutter now just to help me cut out the individual trees. And then I'll be using my small detailing scissors to get into all of the little nooks and crannies. One thing to remember is if you are using a patterned fabric like this one, make sure to have all of your stripes going in the same direction. Otherwise, it might look a little wonky. Once you're ready to put your material on your project, you'll peel off the paper backing and you can see that there's a bit of a shine, which tells me that the adhesive is on there and ready to go. I've decided to use this piece of board to make my sign with my trees and I'm putting a piece of Teflon paper on top because I don't want to burn my wood and I don't want to burn the fabric either. I'm putting it on at 275 degrees and I'm leaving it for about 45 to 60 seconds to make sure that the heat bond adheres properly to the wood. For the first couple of trees, I had to figure out how long I needed to leave it on and I found the 45 seconds worked fairly good. I'm just double checking here to make sure that everything is stuck on properly. And then I'm just going to continue adding my trees. Here's what my sign looks like so far and I am loving it. I went over to my Cricut and I cut out the words Merry Christmas and I will have this linked in my website as a free printable along with the shapes of these trees. I'm just going to add on this decal and then I'm totally finished with this project. The final project I have for you today is a couple of fabric cone trees. I'm just going to use a piece of cardstock and roll it into a cone and then I'm just going to use some hot glue to hold it in place. Then I'm going to cut the bottom straight so it stands up correctly. Now I'm going to take my rotary cutter, cut off any ends and then cut each of these fabric scraps into one inch strips. When you're cutting fabrics, it's really important to have sharp tools. So sharp fabric scissors, a sharp rotary cutter like this one. I'll have links to all sorts of these types of products in my description box. Using hot glue to apply the fabric, I'm just going to start at the bottom of the cone and work my way around, just wrapping the fabric strips around and around, overlapping them a little bit on the other side so you don't see any of the cardstock. Now you can see here that at the end, the fabric ended up going down on an angle and that's because the cone is getting smaller and smaller the farther up that I go. But I'm just going to be pulling it and making little ripples in it. That's going to add to the texture of the trees and it's totally fine with me. I love all things rustic and natural so I was totally fine with having a little bit of roughness to these trees. Once I got to the top of the tree, I just kind of squished it all together, added some hot glue and pressed the fabric together in a point to create the top of the tree. To give this tree even more of a rustic look, I'm going to glue it down onto this wood slice and that will be the tree trunk. So I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue around the bottom and then place it onto the wood slice as centered as possible. One of my favorite decor items to use for the Christmas holidays is these red pit berries that come in a garland from the Dollar Tree. I still have some left over from last year because when I find them, I tend to stock up. I'm going to be gluing them down every once in a while just to make sure that it stays in place. It is a wired garland, but it can be a little wonky just because it's been twisted into a circle for so long. So I'm just going to wind it all the way up to the top of the tree and then I'm going to cross it over and bring it back down. Some of the pit berries have fallen out of their original formation so I'm going to just use a little bit of hot glue and get them back to normal. 
to give the tree a topper, I'm going to use some of this frosted boxwood. It kind of looks like lamb's ear, the way the texture is on it. But I really love using this for the winter time and for Christmas decor. So I'm going to go ahead and add these on to the top of the tree, just three of them. And then I'm going to use a larger red berry for the very top. I also made a second smaller tree using the striped fabric. I added some tiny little frosted berries to it, added the same three leaves, and then added one more white berry to the top. I think these turned out really sweet. I hope you enjoyed these rustic Christmas DIYs using fabric. Make sure you go down to my description box and click on the link for Chunkake fabric. You will not be disappointed. I'll have the majority of the products I used besides the fabric listed down in my description box. Most of them came from Amazon, so you're sure to be able to find them there. Please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and click the notification bell. I've got lots in store. You're not going to want to miss out. Bye for now. Bye.